6.7 works with um, trigonometric models and again you're going to be doing just maybe one little thing different from the last section in that you're going to be plugging in values and trying to extrapolate some information from your equation and the the graph that you make. So what I'm going to do is just one short example and then I'll leave it up to you to let me know if there's something else you'd like me to do from from this section and I'll cover another couple of examples in the review test which I will be doing next for you and will post the link to on my PBWiki site. <clears throat> so sorry about that, that was my chair. We're going to talk about the um, the handout that is on the website as well. The, the link to it will be with this uh, description. And there is uh, the question asks you to graph and find some information about this model of uh, a tide. So it's a tide on the east coast of Canada on August 15th. They give you the height um, of the tide at time t and you have to graph it. So I didn't give you this um, graph grid in the handout that I gave you, but you did have this entire table of values. So what I've done is gone ahead and just graph that to save some time. So here's my graph, nicely done in purple. You notice that it starts here. Um, if you take a look, you would probably be thinking now, what kind of, of trigonometric equation should I be using? Should I use a a sine function, should I use a cosine function? And they don't tell you what you have to use. But this time I'm going to do a sine function for you just so you don't uh, always use cosine because sometimes your teacher will ask you for both. So how high is the high tide? How low is low tide? Well, that's pretty easy. You just look at the data and the data for uh, 10 o'clock in, in the morning was 7.6. So high tide is 7.6, high tide 7.6 meters, and low tide that's going to be either 4 or 16. If you look at 4 a.m. it's 0. 0.7 and 16 hours is 0. 0.8 so your 0. 0.7 would be the lowest, 0. 0.7 meters for low tide. Determine the amplitude and period for this periodic function. Okay so the amplitude now we might want to um, do one of the steps for finding the equation and that is trying to figure out where the axis is going to be. So for the amplitude I have 7.6 and it goes down to 7 so the amplitude is going to be 7.6 minus 0.7 and I'm going to divide that by 2. So that's going to give you 3.45 so that's your A value. Now, once I have the A value, I can figure out where the axis is as well by either adding 3.45 to the lowest or subtracting 3.45 from the highest. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do 7.6 minus 3.45 to get the axis. I guess I'll just write that up here why I did this. And that would give me 5, 1, and 4. So 4.15. So then you would take your ruler, it's always nice to do it nice and neatly, and I have 4.15, that's just above this point, it was 4.1, so 4.15 is like here. And it's always a good idea to just sketch that on. Okay, so there's my axis, you can see the amplitude very nicely here. So amplitude is either the highest minus the axis or the lowest minus the axis or from highest to lowest the distance divided by two is how I calculated it today. Um, okay so we have the amplitude is 3.45 a is equal to 3.45 and the period for this function. <clears throat> so the period would be from this one we're going to use trough to trough or lowest point to the lo next lowest point because I don't have this graph continued here. Right? It should be going up like this. So I'm going to use these two points and you can use that off the graph so it's 4 a.m. and 4 p.m. so that's 12 hours. Period is 12 hours. Now if you know anything about tides you'll know that the period is not exactly 12 hours 
or the high tide and low tide would always be at the same time every day and they wouldn't need tidal charts. So if you've ever been down to the ocean, you'll know that this is just an example. So the period is 12 hours. So if I want to know K, remember that the period, the, the K value is going to be 360 degrees divided by the period and that's going to give me 30. So K is 30. Determine an equation for a sine function that approximates the data. Justify all values of components of your equation. Well, we're not going to pay, spend too much time justifying because we kind of talked about it while we're doing it, so I'm not going to write that out. So if I want to use a sine function, that means I need to use this point here for my starting point. And again, I tell you, sine functions must begin on the axis. So this is my axis point here. It's actually a little bit under, but we're going to use that anyway. And you can see that if I look down, that's at 7 a.m. So the height at time t, I'm going to write the amplitude. So it's going to be a positive sine function, right? Positive because I go up first and then down. If it went down first, then that would be a negative sine function. So I'm going to say 3.45 sine and my um, k value here is going to be 30 t and I need to figure out how far I've moved it over. So 30 and this time it's going to be in brackets because I have it in, in um, time across the bottom here. So it's been moved to the right 7 so it's going to be t minus 7 degrees. And finally we have our axis, so up 4.15. So it gives me everything I need right here. So here's my K, here's my D, my shift of 7, and the axis. Amplitude. Done. Determine the height of the tide at 2 a.m. on August 15th, 11 p.m. on the 15th, and 3 a.m. on the 16th. Okay, so I need to know what T is going to be here as we go from um, like 2 a.m. If I want to put in 2 a.m., so 2 a.m. would be this two here. So I would do, I'm going to write that one up here because they don't have a lot of room. So 2 a.m. So I'm going to do H at 2, and that's just going to be 3.45 sine 30 times 2 minus 7 plus 4.15 and all you do is plug this into your calculator so you'd have the sine of minus 150 because 2 minus 7 is minus 5 and if you do that on your calculator you'll just come up with a really nice answer like 2.4 meters. Now you want to check, right? take a look at your graph here at 2 so this is going to be coming back up here so 2.4 meters, that would be about here. And that would make sense for our graph. Okay, so that's 2 a.m. Um, 11 p.m. on August 15th. So that's just plugging in T equals 11. So H at 11 is going to be... So all I'm doing here is I'm just substituting in, just substituting in the, the T value. So 11 minus 7 degrees plus another bracket, 4.15. So that's going to be 11 minus 7 is 4, the sine of 120 degrees times 3.45, then add 4.15, and that comes out to 7.1. 7.1. Oh, now just a minute. When I plugged in 11 here, so this was 11 p.m. So we're lucky that this works the way it did because I shouldn't have plugged in 11, right? Because 11 is 11 a.m. We're using uh, the military clock here. So 11 p.m. would be H at 23. And if you did H at 23 hours, you're going to get the very same answer. And the reason makes sense, obviously, because we're doing a period of 12. So it's just it's, you know, you're using the same values. So 23 minus 7, 
degrees plus 4.15 and that's going to give you 7.1 as well so this is this is 11 a.m this is 11 p.m right still gives you the same answer because we're using a 12 hour period so if it wasn't exactly 12 hours this would not work nicely for you at all and maybe some questions you have to do would be like that and 3 a.m. on August 16th, 3 a.m., that would be H at 27. Right? So 24 hours plus 3 into the morning. And you do the same calculation. Just plug it in. So I have 30 times 27 minus 7 degrees plus 4.15. Whoops, ran out of room. And that comes out to about 1.16. So 3 a.m., that's going to take me back over here, right? So 3 a.m., that would be 3 a.m. here and then 3 a.m. over here on the next day. So this would be 3, uh, 3 a.m., 3 p.m. would be here, right? So I have 3 a.m., 3 p.m., 3 a.m., and you can see that this is just going to go very nicely like this. Okay, so that's that's all you really have to do with these. Um, there are some trickier questions where they'll ask you how many times did you get to this height in so many hours or so many periods of the function, how many times. And I'm going to do one similar to that in the um, in the makeup test. Not a makeup test, sorry. It's a practice test for you for Chapter 6. And I'll do the whole test. And again, that will be... Online, if you go to the link, you'll be able to find the practice tests that you might want to try before looking at the next video.